just know that they're going to be playing hard for 40 minutes. The game's going to be very slow down, so it's kind of hard to speed them up, and they don't really turn the ball over th too much. So just be able to play your game and don't get frustrated because they try to give you those, we can say luxury shots, but you think it's a good shot, but it's really a bad shot. It's just the shot they want you to take. So if we take our shots that we want to take, we should be able to knock them down and be successful. What's the difference between one of your shots and one of the, one of the shots they want you to take? So usually they go under a lot of handoffs and stuff. Um, so that first on the handoff, you might be wide open and it should be like 27 seconds on the shot clock rather than keep going and you can wind them down like they do to everybody and they don't shoot into like less than six seconds on the shot clock. So taking those type of shots is like, like I said, like if you shoot like high 20s, a lot of times that's what the shots they want you to take. And then if we try to fight that urge to not take those shots and wind down the shot clock, we should be successful. Coach Young said yesterday that your experience, the team's experience by you being What's your biggest takeaway uh, from playing UVA in January that you can bring to this game tomorrow? Uh, they're very experienced. They have a great coaching staff, great program, of course. Um, so I think the takeaways would be, like like BD said, we, last game we took quick shots, and they took great shots, and we took good shots and turned down great shots. So I think next game, taking the great shot and turning down the good shot is going to be a big key for us, and, of course, guarding the ball. Yeah. January game was a lot of, obviously for all the freshmen. First time you guys faced the pack line defense. What was it like, you know, doing that for the first time? And, and would that experience help you guys tomorrow? You think? Uh, it was definitely a blow in the face for the first time. Those guys were big, uh, <laughs> very big. But those guys, they could guard the ball very well and. It was shocking for all of the freshmen. Uh, you can see last game that it was just a new experience for us, and it was a learning experience. So I think this time we'll handle ourselves better uh, in that situation. For either of you guys to answer, um, obviously every time this game comes around, yeah. there's a lot of hype around. It's a rivalry game, and all the cliches. Now they're coming into your building as defending national champs. Does that add another wrinkle to it? What is, do you guys look at that at all? What is, what is that? Yeah, it adds a wrinkle to it, but it's just also like just a rivalry. It doesn't matter what the record was. It can be 0 and 30, but it's still going to be a rival game. It's still going to be packed out regardless what their record is or anything, what they have done in the past. But, yeah, it's going to be a good game. How hard is it uh, to not fall trapped to their pace of play? Because you, obviously you go into every game mm -hmm. trying to bring your own style. Yeah. At some point, you kind of look up and you're like, well, crap, you kind of fell trapped to what they Yeah. Time. Yeah, when the score's like 20 to like 12, and you're just like, like, come on now, come on. It's, yeah, it's they they play a lot of mind games and they get you like that. But like I said, we have to play at our pace and don't fall for their tricks. Uh, last game, I mean, thirty nine points. Uh, you, you know, seven yeah. percent from the field. Yeah. So there's a lot, of, a lot of things you you want to do better. And yeah. Actually, kind of uh, do better on that on that offensive end there. What what else are you kind of uh, need improvement on? Um, just like I said, just we're more confident now than we were before. Um, that's the biggest thing. Our game plan is a lot better as before, and we just have to go out there and execute it, and just believe in ourselves and keep go out there and play hard. That's the thing. That's the biggest thing we got to do. And I feel like if we do that, we should be good. You're more more confident. Why? Because people might say, "Well, geez, you, you lost seven of your last eight. Where, where's the confidence?" It's just like always, always believe in ourselves. Like it doesn't matter. Like we, yeah, we did lose our last like seven out of the eight, like you said. But we believe in our work. Everybody works out a lot. Um, everybody always trains. Um, uh, everybody watches more film and everything. So each game we're gaining more confidence. Even though the success wasn't there, it doesn't matter. Um, we're moving on to the next game and we're just moving forward and keep working. Jalen, uh, what's the biggest surprise so far for you this season? I mean, this is your freshman year, your first year. Uh, none of them were really surprises because coming to the higher level, they tell you what how things are going to be. But I'm fast, but it's different when you got a six five guy just as fast as you running beside you, and every time you drive to the lane, there's a seven footer down there with his hands up. So um, mm -hmm. it definitely comes down to making smart decisions at this level, especially for a guy from my size. Of course, this is not as easy as high school. It's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. So it's really about making the right read and making the right decision. Mm -hmm. There have been times you've just been hot from outside. Where does that come from? Because you, there have been games you've been lights out from outside. 
Sure. Uh, really just comes from spending a lot of time in the gym, uh, mm -hmm. getting up a lot of shots, and my teammates and the coaches believing in me. And once they – and like once I knock down a few and they give me that that confidence and they show that they trust me, it kind of just builds from there and just makes the shots more like rhythm and shots more confident. So. Mm -hmm. One for both of you to answer. Before the season even started, a lot of the conversation about this team was about where it's going to be at the end of the year, the growth that's going to happen. It's obviously a young team, all that. Yeah. Kind of looking all the ups and downs that have happened since then for both of you, where do you feel like you individually have grown the most and where do you think the team has grown? Um, for the team, I feel like experience. Of course, each game is a learning experience. I feel like everybody got better like that. They understand the grind, and like how many games it takes. Like coming from high school, they don't play forty minutes. Some of them they even play with a shot clock. That's, that's two things right there. Um, it's just like like I said, experience they gained a lot. And the individual for me is just like being more of a leader, be more vocal, be able to um, bring the team together when um things are going hard, and then. I think that's the two things. Uh, for, for us, I think the things we've built on was the defensive end. I know coming in, I wasn't the best defender, but I think since I've been here, I've done, uh, I've done a great job at it, a pretty good job, and my teammates have as well. Uh, us being a young team, like you said, the experience. Uh, no, we're not used to day in, day out, walking into a big arena, whether whether it's home or away, playing in front of thousands of people. So I think uh, we got those jitters out early, and we've been moving on from then. You guys are third in the country in, in turnovers. Uh -huh. What's helped you guys be so efficient in that category all season, and how do you guys control the tempo? Um, I think that's a big, uh, big thing is our um. Just being confident with the ball, being able to make sure every pass is a, a perfect pass, like a 100% pass. Knowing the person's wide open, on time, on target. That's what we preach a lot. From uh, Coach Young preaches a lot, just on time, on target. And then, just, like, like like I said, just believing in yourself as well. You guys have played so many close games. Yeah. There's a minute left in this game. Yeah. Really, really close again. You have to be this time. Um, it's just depending on the game situation. I, I don't. I can't really answer that right now. It's probably like, it's kind of depending on the game, how it's flow, who's hot, who's not, um, who's helping us win, who's helping, who's not helping us win. Um, is this all that? Is this it just depends on the game? I can't really answer that for you. Sorry. Last time in Charlottesville, six assists for the team, thirteen turnovers for the team. Yeah. Not, not typical for you guys. Were they doing? Were they doing certain things to force the turnovers? I guess you kind of have to avoid this time around, or what was kind of creating all those turnovers last time? Probably they were speeding us up a little bit. Uh, blame that on myself. Uh, we had like I think eight in the first half, or like eight in the first media time, something like that. Something crazy that's not really like us. So I was kind of disappointed in myself watching the film. I seen it was kind of like lazy turnovers by me. Um, not putting the team in the right situations. So that's my fault as a leader. You know, Mike Young, he has a pregame ritual. He popcorn on the pitch for the game. What are your you guys pregame? Okay. Uh, my pregame ritual is <laughs> I really just like to get focused for the game. I try to stay away from the social media, stay off my phone, uh, and just get away from a lot of people trying to be like outside people trying to be in my ear and just focus on uh, the task we have ahead of us. And um, like I said, just get up shots on the court and try to catch my rhythm. Mm. And for me, I'll probably just listen to like some music, some um yeah, just listen to music, take some uh, some electrolytes and some fruit snacks, usually. You guys big popcorn eaters? Like popcorn? No. When I go to the movies, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what yeah. sort of uh, challenges does mm. Kihei Clark present? I mean, you, you face him a few times now. Yeah. Um, what does he present you know, on both ends of the court? He's like their engine. He makes them go. He plays about like 39 minutes. So you can tell he's a big piece of their offense and everything and their whole team. So be able to like neutralize him and stuff. He's a great player. It's gonna be kind of hard to do, but to be able to force him to the help and make him make difficult decisions. That's all. Yeah. Um, pretty cool being home playing UVA. Um, at Duke it was a good experience for everybody. Uh, it was my second time. Being there, it was pretty cool. It's just we're not really like into the crowd as much. We don't really sense 
like feel them as much as people think because you're so focused on the game. You're not really worrying about the crowd, what they're saying when you're like up or down. It doesn't matter. Now, last time UVA held you got to four three pointers. So that the Georgia Tech game were the only times you had that few amount of three pointers. Yeah. Uh, from watching the film, I guess were they just making making it really tough looks on you? So what was UVA doing to kind of uh, keep it to that? I think UVA, watching the film, they guarded us on the arc very well last time. And uh, like BDF said, they sped us up that game. So some of the threes we took were forced threes and threes that they wanted us to take. Uh, it all came, that comes back to taking uh, the great shot and turning down a good shot. Uh, and I think learning from our mistakes last game and the film uh, that, we're, that we're learning from that and we have learned from that. So, um, Tomorrow night, we need to take great shots instead of the good shots.